Hey, what's up, everyone, and thank you so much for checking out this episode of the Godox Production Series. So, for this episode, we've actually changed things up a little bit. This is going to be a more extended episode where we're going to go even further in depth on our lighting breakdown and on our production breakdown on how we created this short film using rain and smoke effects. Not only that, but we have some very special guests for this episode. We have Bob Trevino and Mike Wilkes. These guys are true special effects professionals. They have worked on a ton of TV shows and movies throughout the years. Some of them include From Dust Till Dawn, The Equalizer, and HBO's Righteous Gemstones. So they have a ton of experience. They're going to share a lot of that with us tonight. Um, they're going to go in depth on how they created the rain effects and also some of the smoke effects for the short film that we created for this episode. So stay tuned, sit back, relax, check it out, and let's get into it. We are uh, just getting everything set up in place here. We've got our truck placed. It's really loud if you can't tell, but uh, we're about to get our first shot up. So turn the faucets on and let's make it rain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. We're here at the illustrious Southside Studios in Dallas, Texas. And follow me, I wanna show you some cool stuff. Because we are adding rain effects and a lot of special effects to this particular shoe, a lot of pre-production needed to happen. So we wanted to be as organized as possible. The first step was writing the script. So I put together just a, a fun little short script about um, a girl whose truck broke down and it's the, just a torrential downpour. Um, I actually made some previous images as well. And those previous images help show the special effects team what we're doing. It also helps the gaffer and the grip and the rest of the crew to really have an idea of what we're going for. 
before we even show up to set. So we already have inspiration, we already have an idea, and it just helps things move so much faster on set. So uh, in combination with Godox lights, we're able to light up everything really fast and make it look just like our previous images and get to work. So we had a unique opportunity with this shoot to go super cinematic, super dark. Uh, we have a really awesome location. So I'm going to show you some of our props. Uh, we were able to get a cool phone booth uh, from a prop house here locally. And uh, I was able to distress it down, make it look super dirty. So the cool thing about this video is we got to use a vintage picture car. Check out this truck. We got to deck it out a little bit. We got the dice in the mirror. We got the little hula girl. You know, you just you kind of have to make it look lived in, make it look real, make it look natural. So we had props inside. An erotic fantasy novel. <laughs> You're not gonna use that. <laughs> so here we are in the set. And so the idea of this episode is we wanted to utilize some rain effects as well as some atmospheric fog. Um, just to highlight a lot of light beams and make it look very moody within our scene. So here I am right next to our prop truck. And the idea is that the truck is broken down. So we had the special effects guys basically make it look like the uh, hood is smoking like crazy. And that's really what's creating that atmosphere that we're looking at. All right, so we want to make sure that uh, this truck looks like it's going to sputter and die and then start billowing some smoke. So what I'm doing is I'm putting another smoke machine up underneath, luckily, with these beautiful old trucks, there's a huge engine compartment. So I've got lots of room to be able to put a smoke machine right in here with no problem. I'll run the power down through the, uh, the, the floor there and uh, turn it on and you're gonna see a nice little smoke coming out of it. All right, wet down, coming in, wet down, coming in. And we, even if we're not shooting like right, right now, we will tend to wet the area early. It gives a chance for it to, to soak in and to help out. I mean, we, even on a very sunny day or it's, it's been sunny that night and we're gonna wet down the ground, we'll end up doing it early. So that uh, we know we're gonna refresh it, we know it's gonna dry, but this gives a chance for it to start out wet. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're getting this uh, area wet and uh, to simulate the, the rain scene, help to sell the, the uh, gag itself. The nice thing about working with these Godox lights today is that they are IP65 rated, which means you don't have to worry about the lights whatsoever because they can deal with all different kinds of weather conditions when you walk on set. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of the lighting situation that we're doing here. So we got the F400 by, we have two of them on set. We have one that is right over top of us right now lighting and just giving a little bit of detail onto the truck. We are upstairs where our lights are kicking down onto our world. We're able to use this light right next to the water source and the water source was actually splashing this light. Uh, it just made it really cool. It backlit that water and it allowed the camera to really pick up uh, what was happening down below. This light was cranked up to 40%. Um, and so it was plenty of brightness, um, even though the truck is about 30 feet below. But that's giving us this nice fall off that's coming right onto the truck and just creating this really nice bounce across the hood and across our subject and also helping backlight some of that rain. Right back here is an F400 by that's only at 1% power. And we have the silk and the grid on that light. And that's just to diffuse the light to make it very, very soft um, as it falls off in our environment. And this is backlighting our rain for us, so that way we can really see the rain, especially in the windows. It's also kissing her on the back, which makes it really, really nice. Um, we wanted to go with more of a warmer uh, color temperature just because we like the sodium vapor look. And that's really the inspiration of this entire scene is to really achieve that sodium vapor at nighttime, like street lamp look. We also have an F200 by, and that's acting like our moonlight. So that one closer to daylight giving us a little bit of that blue on her face, especially when we get into the cab. And that light's gonna basically help bring out our talent's eye light and uh, just give her a little bit more fill across her face. So these are the TP4Rs and they are IP65 rated. So they can also be put in this rain or any other situation. The other really nice thing is, 
They have eye rings on either side that came with the lights with cables that we immediately put up so you don't need zip ties, you don't need anything else. The product came with it. They're super fast to put up and they make a really awesome look. So the other light that we really need to talk about is the MG1200 Buy. So we have two up there with the Fresnel lens attached to them and that's what's creating these really nice beams coming down and creating some really nice pulls. So this is an MG1200 Buy. We put a Fresnel, the GF14 Fresnel, um, on the front of it and we put it in spotlight mode. And so that's gonna give us that narrow beam and that's shooting through another one of these window rafters up top. And it is creating those atmospheric beams that are really cool. So we wanted to use those atmospheric beams and the rain together just to make it look really dramatic and very moody within our scene. So these lights are great because like the flex mats, these can actually be wet. I mean, you could use them in inclement weather. Um, they are IP54, so they'll actually withstand uh, rain. So which, that's what's great about this is that it's perfect for this shoot. Um, we're able to put such a powerful 1200 watt bicolor light in the rain and utilize that and take full advantage of a light that powerful. And this is another MG1200 buy. This one's going through the opening down right here down below is the phone booth, kind of that area that we had the phone. So this is doing kind of the same thing. It's creating those atmospheric beams. So once again, we have a GF14 Fresnel and we put that into spotlight mode and that's creating that narrow beam that the haze is just picking up and it's giving us that really cool volumetric lighting that we were after. All right, we're gonna talk about a couple of our gags, our lighting gags that we did today. So we did this really cool like alien light coming in with the wind blowing in our hair and all that. So we have the F400 by light that we have. And what we did was we rotated the light as I increased the intensity on the app. Turn to the right, go fan, go light, go hammer. All right, we got something there, woo! <laughs> like pretty cool. You got it? I think so. I think so, let's, let's check it, let's check right. it. So one of the other gags that we did was with the TP4Rs, which are the hanging lights back here. And as she was walking to kind of make the mood a little creepier, what we did was change it in the middle of the shot to be a flicker. And that's all through the app. All I have to do is press, and now we have a flickering light. And we did that in shot while we were shooting. For the phone booth shot, we kind of wanted to do something fun for it, something that was really like calling to her from a distance. So we found a TL30 uh, in the kit. And what's great about this light, it's so small and compact, it can pretty much fit anywhere. Um, and this phone booth actually has a little hidden compartment right here. So we put it in this little plastic bag right here. And if I can pull this down here, just a little hidden compartment, it illuminates our light and the effect that we're using here, this is actually a fire truck effect and we just like the red. Um, we have it in the second speed mode and that just gives it that little flicker from time to time as if it's like an SOS call or something. But we just liked it, it was different, so that's what we went with. So sometimes you run into a, a little hiccup where the script calls for something that you don't have. This truck, for example, doesn't even have a radio. Radio is a big part of this script. So we had to buy one that would match and kind of cheat the shot. So we shot it separate from this truck and we uh, used the Godox lights to replicate the look and feel, mood and tone of what we already had going. And rocks, go ahead and mess with it. And don't breathe. Oh, well, oh. Uh, someone breathe. <laughs> I don't know how to breathe. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, we got it, we got it. Rain always becomes an issue, especially being around cameras. So we rigged one of our little shower curtains here on a six by and we wrapped it so that way no rain is actually coming down onto our camera operator and most importantly, onto our cameras. Okay, what we're doing today is we're simulating a rainstorm. A lot of times in the effects world, we have to simulate all sorts of weather elements. And in this case, we're simulating smoke. We actually have smoke, smoke and rain. She's parked under this uh, area here, and you can see where there's some openings up above. And these openings are out uh, uh, busted windows and just open frames to the environment outside. The rain would be coming through these window panes here. We've done two things. 
We've actually placed our rain bars up above. They're small rain hand wands with nozzles on it to spray a certain pattern of rain. For lack of a better term, this is just like a fancy rain spigot nozzle. I mean, you can look at the end of it. What makes it special is what it does to the water. I don't know if you see that inside. There's some veins in there that actually swirl the water. So the water goes in there and swirls and then comes out this nozzle in a conical fashion. So it makes a nice pattern of water droplets, pretty large size. This is made specifically to go at the end of a three quarter inch garden hose nozzle. One of the toughest jobs that we have is we have to figure out how to get water into places that there is no water. So right now we've got a huge hose that runs from a line inside the building over here, it runs across the, uh, the tracks that we have in the middle of the buildings. All of our water is coming straight up from here through this tube or this hose over to a manifold system that we built for distribution. And all I've got here is I've got a garden hose run to every sprinkler that we've got. I've got it so that this is our first one, this is our second one, this is our third one, and this is our fourth one, which is the furthest one down. It's, uh, you, you have to figure out a whole lot of things, uh, a lot of math. <laughs> uh, engineering is a big role in the effects department. Um, we are basically plumbers, we're carpenters, we're electricians. So we have uh, garden hoses set up above, and we've got a pump that we're pumping water from a tank over here. It goes up above, and we spray water through these openings right here, as you can see right now. The light has to shine through these raindrops in order for it to, uh, to be seen on camera. Typically, when we do that, it's always a little sketchy working with our grip and electric brethren with water. But with these new lights that are waterproof, we can work right next to them. No worries, no concerns. And uh, it makes our job a lot easier, makes everybody feel a bit safer. Now, the way both rain and smoke works for us in the effects world, you have to light it from behind. What happens is the drops of water become like little lenses. So when light strikes the lens, you see it as little points of light. It's kind of like seeing a rainstorm. If you look outside at night, you'll better see those drops when it falls in front of a street light. It does the same thing. So that's what we're doing here. When we've done our, our, our rain bars up above with our hoses, they've actually placed lights up above, so it helps to accent each one of those drops. Now the same thing is true for smoke. When we run smoke through here, which we've got some smoke, if you can see it in the background here, the smoke is best seen in light. You'll see it underneath the shafts of light right here, and you'll see those smoke particles bounce the light off. So that's what we've got here, those two items. We've got water for the rain and smoke, just because it's creepy. In the case of smoke, wind can be your best friend or your worst enemy. So we utilize fans to drive the smoke in a certain direction, but the wind can shift. So what we do for shifting wind is we have what's commonly called a tube of death. I have no idea where that came from, that name. But tube of death. What it does is, this is a little bit modified, at least the output. This is a carpet fan, like you see people when they dry carpets after it's been cleaned. This is a carpet fan. And this is a plastic tube. Right now we've probably got 150 foot, maybe, on this. And it's, it's almost like if you were to manufacture plastic bags, what they would do is they would heat seal and, and uh, put the serration on it. Heat seal serration. This is, we acquire this before that process happens. So it's a big plastic tube. And then on the inlet of that fan that's blowing and inflating this tube, which is tied at the other end, the inlet is a smoke machine. And right now we've got it set on a, a timer, so it's pumping in smoke at a certain volume, at a certain rate, and uh, a certain time in between for a certain duration. The smoke goes in and travels down this tube as fast as it can, almost like dye in a river and it comes out these holes. The wind exits as does the smoke. And so what you're able to accomplish with that is you're able to take smoke down a long corridor. Before we use these, you had to have some poor guy with a smoke machine running up and down the set to provide smoke in such a large area. In this case, the 150 some odd feet we've got here, maybe 100 feet, you can have one person operating this machine and it carries it that far. So right now, you can see the smoke pulling up here. Thankfully, the wind right now is being our friend 
and bringing it here toward camera so you can see it. And with these elements in place, and with the cameras just right, you'll be able to see all the smoke and all the rain you need. And left cut, all the rain, I think we got it, that was in the bag. Godox is giving away a product to one of you watching this right now. All you have to do is answer the question in the comments below, and one of you will win a Godox giveaway. So the question is, tell us about your all-time favorite rain scene. It could be a TV show or a movie, and tell us how you would use Godox lights to recreate that rain scene. So answer the question in the comments below, and it's your chance to win a free Godox prize. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Godox Production Series. We'll see you next time. Until then, happy filmmaking.